This is Pastor Morris D. Lewis, the speaker for the Bible Interpreter Tapes. Our subject on the interpretation of symbols today is God is revealed in his law. So let's turn to the book uh, of uh, Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, and read what uh, the Lord says by his prophet concerning the aspect of law. Now you remember in our previous lecture that one of the words for symbol or similitude or parable in the Old Testament is the word shamal, which is the word for rule, that is, uh, God's laws in nature and in the spiritual realm of the Ten Commandments rules over every aspect of his creation. Now notice in the Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, verse 11, I gave them statutes, and I showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Now in this uh, text, the prophet said that uh, I gave them my statutes, that if a man should obey and live in them, uh, he should have life. Now notice in the 25th verse of the same chapter of Ezekiel, that is chapter 20, this verse, Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments, judgments whereby they should not live. Now you see in one text he says, I gave them laws by which they should live, and I gave them laws that were not good by which they would not live. Now in this particular study of symbols, we want to take up the aspect that as the law is reveals good and evil, and though there are laws by which we live and there are laws by which we die, there are also symbols applicable uh, to both of those factors. So the same symbol that may be used for life will be the same symbol used for death, and there's a very definite reason for this, and that's why we want to take up this study on symbols today of God revealed in his law. So I turn to the great chapter on the law in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, uh, and begin to read these, these verses. Exodus 20, I'm reading verse 5, which has to do with the second commandment having to do with images. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, that is, to the images, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, this is one of the most uh, uh, profound observations in the scripture, and is found, as you recognize, in the law of God. And this is one of the keys in revealing the great significance of uh, symbols in the scripture. Now, this word visit is very important in this chapter. I turn uh, to the book of Psalms 103, uh, and uh, I want you to see very, very distinctly that the word visit, I will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, is a very significant observation, not only in the function of the law, but also in the function of the symbols in the interpretation of the scripture, which if a person understands, will increase his comprehension of the Bible from 30 to 50 percent. Now I am reading from the book of Psalms 103, verse 18, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them, the Lord hath prepared his throne in heavens, in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Now these two verses are very essential in the understanding of symbols. Now let me go back and elucidate some of the observations in these texts. He says uh, concerning the, his children uh, and their righteousness, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments. Now the word for commandments in Hebrew is pakad. And the word pakad in Exodus 20 verse 5 is the word interpreted visiting, in which it said, I will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children. Now that word visit there, pakad, is translated here, his commandments. And this is not the only place. There are other and uh, numerous places where this is the case. So the word visit of the iniquities of the fathers on their children 
is a process of the operation of law, and that law is the Ten Commandments. Now I call your attention to the 19th verse, following the 18th in Psalms 103, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Now this is a, a fine text on the interpretation of symbols. Now I spoke of his law and his commandments and those who do them, and that the Lord has prepared his throne, which is his ruling uh, uh, position, in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Now the word ruleth here uh, from the Hebrew is the word mashal, which is the word for symbols, parables, and uh, the uh, similitudes that we're discussing in this series of lectures. Now you can see that the word commandment and the keeping of them is the basis of God's throne and by which he rules over all the earth. And the word rule is the word for symbol and parable. In other words, in the symbols and parables of the scripture, they are revealing from nature and human nature the aspects of law that govern the entire operation of God uh, in his control and sovereignty over this world. Now you can see why the symbols have such a tremendous importance in the revelation of the scripture. Now uh, uh, I want you to, uh, to note back in Exodus 20, the, a certain factor in the book of, of the, of the law, the chapter that has to do with the law, that is verse 5 and 6 of Exodus 20. I read 5, that he will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate. Verse 6, and I will show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now you see in those two verses, the law of God is divided into two areas of moral function. One of them is in the area of mercy and love uh, in keeping his commandments, and the other is in visiting the iniquities on those who hate. So hate and love are here in distinction in the aspects of the law, so that there is a law functioning in the aspect of hate, of the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and you remember the text I read you in Ezekiel, it says, I gave them laws that were not good. Now here is the aspect of those laws, the laws of sin and death, which is in the course in the Ten Commandments. And then in contrast to that, the law of mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now you remember that the, uh, the word for law, pakad, or visit, uh, in the chapter I read you from uh, the, the verses I read you from Psalms, uh, indicate that God rules by these laws, and the word rule is the symbol, uh, the word for symbol and uh, similitude and parable in the scripture. So that the, the ruling of God over mankind could be spoken of as the law, and it could also be spoken of as the principles involved in the symbols, the similitudes, the parables uh, of the Bible. So you can see what an important thing it is uh, to see this. Now, uh, the thing that, that's important here I want you to see is that love and hate are here put side by side in contrast and distinction in the function of the law. Now, as we will bring out in this study, the symbols that God uses in the scripture may be interpreted, the same symbol may be used for that which is good and the same symbol may be used in that which is evil, and we will bring this out. Now notice in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, what I have said is reiterated here by Paul uh, in the book of, uh, of Acts, uh, book of Romans, the fifth chapter, I'm reading verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now there the tremendous distinction in the law uh, is as, uh, characterized that as sin has reigned, now you understand the word reign or rule uh, in the Hebrew, which would be also applicable in Greek, uh, is the word for symbol or parable uh, which uh, God is revealing the great principles of his law and righteousness. Now uh, notice I'm reading now from the book of uh, Romans the seventh chapter, I'm reading verse 10. The commandment which was ordained unto life, 
I found to be unto death. Now, we can take a symbol in the scripture, and uh, this, the symbols in the Bible will all have a double application. Uh, if, they, if a symbol is, uh, is applicable to Christ's uh, righteousness or a symbol of his living for the salvation of mankind, which in the Bible is spoken of in many instances as of a lamb, uh, and let me illustrate this. In the book of Leviticus, the first chapter, it says that they will, they are to bring a lamb. Uh, Leviticus 1, 3, and if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. So here he's speaking of bringing the sacrifice, uh, in many instances, a lamb, and it was to be without blemish, because the lamb represents Christ, and Christ was without blemish, without sin. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you know in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, he warns against those uh, who shall appear as lambs or sheep, but they are as ravening wolves. So, you see, the same symbol uh, is, uh, is applicable. A sheep may be referred to Christ uh, and his, uh, his life, and uh, it may also be used for the powers of evil. This is uh, Matthew 7:15 in the Sermon on the Mount. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So here you see a sheep may be uh, in appearance a sheep, but it may be uh, a ferocious animal uh, representing Satan inside. And the same symbol of sheep uh, or lamb is symbolized by Christ. Do you remember when John the Baptist baptized Christ? He said, Behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. So here I want to introduce you to a great uh, factor in the symbols of the Bible. Inasmuch as the law of God is divided into that which is good and that which is evil, so the symbols that apply to the human race will always have a double application. And here uh, you may take a lamb, and that lamb may be applicable to Christ in righteousness. The lamb may also refer uh, in hypocrisy uh, to the works of Satan. Now there are literally hundreds uh, of symbols in the Bible, and by and large these symbols always have a double application to that which is right and to that which is wrong. Now, uh, notice as we go into this uh, affair how this begins to operate. In the scripture, uh, the, the aspect of power of Satan and the power of God are always contrasted. In the book Great Controversy, page 534, it says, Cruelty is satanic, God is love, page 534. So it says in uh, P P Prophets and Kings 585, Satan's accusations against those who seek the Lord are not prompted by displeasure at their sins. He exults in their defective characters, for he knows that only through their transgression of God's law can he obtain power over them. So if there is some symbol applicable to Satan's uh, uh, work or operation to deceive men, that is to get them away from the Ten Commandments and to transgress his law, that symbol uh, would be applicable to his work and the same symbol would be applicable to Christ because Christ is always working uh, to bring about salvation uh, through his power. So here you see that the symbols in the Bible uh, always have a double application. Uh, and there, is, there really is no end to the application of symbols and in this double aspect. Turn with me to the book of uh, Psalms 109, and notice here one impressive uh, symbol and how it is applicable to both aspects of the law, good and evil. Evil in the sense of sin and transgression, which is a transgression of the law. In this book of Psalms 106, 109, verse 6, it says, Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Now, the right hand is very important in the scripture and has a distinctive uh, symbolic uh, meaning in relationship to God's work in behalf of the individual. In Psalms, the 37th chapter, verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. 
Now here's the right hand is symbolic of God's power and assistance, and the right hand in the sense of Satan is also used in application uh, to that which is of, uh, of the evil power. So here you see the right hand could uh, refer to what Satan is doing, and the right hand could also be applicable to what God is doing in behalf of men. Now you see the symbol then uh, is, has a double application of that which is good and that which is evil, and you understand the reason for it is that the law of God as stated in Exodus 20, I will visit the iniquities of the fathers on the children, and that word visit is the word for law. So if there's a, a symbol that has application to the function of law in the sense of sin of the fathers and the children, that same symbol will be applicable uh, to God's mercy and righteousness in those who keep uh, his law and Ten Commandments. Uh, notice in the book Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, verse 2, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. So there you see, Right and left have meaning uh, uh, of both these powers. So if there is a way of righteousness and Satan has inaugurated a way of sin and they're both functioning by law, then the symbol uh, that is applicable would be applicable to both sin and righteousness. And, and this is the way that it operates in the scripture. So to learn that one of the great principles of interpretation of Bible symbols is to understand how these are applicable uh, to both the, the sense of righteousness and that which is sin. Now notice uh, in the scripture how these symbols begin to enlarge and the underlying principle that a symbol is applicable to that which is good and that which is hate. Uh, notice uh, the text which I'm sure you're familiar with in 1 John 4, 8. It says, He that loveth not uh, knoweth not God and so forth. I'm reading 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. Now turn with me to the book of Ecclesia, uh, of to Hosea, and uh, notice now how the opposite uh, is uh, applicable to Satan. This is the book of uh, Hosea, the ninth chapter, verse seven. The days of visitation are come. Now this word visitation here is the same word used in Exodus 20, verse five, and it is pakad, which is the word for the law. So the days of visitation are come, or the days of the operation of law are come, the days of recompense, that is the reward or consequence of one's relationship to the law, either in the sense of righteousness or in the sense of sin and hate, which this text, of course, takes the latter. The days of visitation are come, the days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it, the prophet is a fool, the spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and of thy great hatred. Now you remember the text that I quoted in Exodus 20 verse 5, I will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children of those who hate. Now the word hate in that particular text is different than the one here uh, in the original word in Hebrew, but of course they mean the same, that is hatred and a feeling of antagonism uh, and hurt towards other persons. Now it happens to be in the text which I just now read from Hosea 9, 7, that the word for hate in Hebrew is satam, of which the word satan comes from, which is the word for Satan. So here the word hatred is cognate uh, in meaning, uh, in etymology, which is the meaning of words. It comes from the word Satan. So you see that the, the visitation uh, of the, the law uh, upon those who sin uh, will be recompensed because these persons hate, and the word for hate uh, is the word for Satan. Verse 9, and they have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah, therefore he will remember their iniqui iniquity, he will visit their sins. Now the word visit, as I said, pakad, is the word for punishment in the Old Testament. In fact, it's practically the only word for punishment, and it is the word for the law. So the fact that sin is designated by law and brings destruction and death so the symbols that are applicable to sin and death uh, will be also applicable to Satan. And you take the same symbol and use it in the sense of Christ's righteousness. Now, in, notice this particular text in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 46th chapter, verse 21. Jeremiah 46, verse 21. Uh, and how uh, this uh, word of pakad or visit is used in this text. 
the 21st verse, also her hired men are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks, for they also are turned back and are fled away together. Now you remember in the Bible that a bullock is also used as a symbol and a sacrifice for that which is good. Here the word bullock uh, and, and a fatted bullock is used in the sense of evil. For they are like fatted bullocks, for they also are turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand, because the day of their calamity was come upon them, and the time of their visitation. Their time of visitation is the time when the law of sin will bring destruction and recompense upon the individual. The book of Jeremiah is very, very effective on this observation of the function of the law in that which is good and that which is evil in bringing about the consequence upon evildoers. Now notice in, in this uh, uh, fourth chapter of Hosea, I'm reading verse 9, And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways. Now the word punished here is the word pakad, which is the word visit as is uh, revealed in that text of Exodus 20, verse 5, speaking of the visitation of the sins of the fathers on the children. Now here the same word is used, but here is translated in the King James, punish. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. The word reward here is very significant, and it will help you to understand the great principles uh, in the Bible uh, of symbols and how they are applicable uh, to good and evil and how they function uh, in the revelation of the function of law. So he says, I will, re uh, I will bring upon you uh, punishment and reward them for their doings. Now the word for reward here in Hebrew is shub, which is the word for return. Now when a person recognizes in the symbols and in the function of law that it returns back upon the person who, uh, who commits an act either of righteousness or of iniquity uh, in light of the law, uh, that uh, action will return back upon the individual. Now, uh, let me point out again these symbols uh, of good and evil and how that the right hand, the left hand, and how this is functioning in the revelation of the scriptures. I'm turning now to the book of Zechariah, the third chapter, the book of Zechariah, the third chapter, and reading verse 1. Uh, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, Satan here is on the right hand. Now, you remember I read the text where it says God is on the right hand. So the right hand may be applicable to Satan. The right hand may be applicable to the work of God. Now, in this text it says, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. The word for resist in this text is the same word that is interpreted Satan. For the word resist in Hebrew is satam, uh, satan, which is the word for Satan because Satan resists. So the individual is, uh, is brought to the uh, realization that the word or symbol as I spoke to you in a previous lesson, whenever you have a symbol, you analyze the physical function of that symbol, and that will be the key of the interpretation. Now here it is. Here we have Satan standing at his right hand to resist. And the word for Satan and the word for resist are the same words in Hebrew. So that uh, Satan's operation comes out of his name, and the same is also applicable to that which is, uh, uh, is truth and righteousness. Now notice uh, in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verse 7, it says, And in his day Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So Christ is called the Lord our righteousness, as Satan is called Satan the resister. So in the name given to God is the, um, is the operation of his... Um, of the principles of God, in the name given to Satan are the operation of the um, functions of Satan. And when you have a symbol that is applicable to God and a symbol applicable to Satan, you will find in the analysis of those symbols the meaning of that particular symbol.
Now, this is what a person needs to see, and that all this function and interpretation comes from the operation of the law of God. So no wonder you can see how that God's law is very, very significant. It not only reveals the character of God and Christ, it reveals the operation of Satan, and it is the basic principle of the symbols. To understand this will help you to comprehend the Bible vastly more than you can anticipate.